Since BLED was really the first four-year program in an undergraduate college and the department in each college, let's say they have a department of psychology, sociology, history, there was no department of education at that time in a college. So we created a sort of system whereby the BLED can be uh, instituted in a college and sort of rooted there through some kind of administrative um, uh, more informed by academic understanding uh, uh, procedures. So we created a steering committee idea that a um, faculty member from within the college who comes from any other department but is willing to coordinate this new program and maybe some new faculty that is taken in temporarily because it took us a long time to get teaching positions from the UGC to teach the BLET program. So this steering committee would include members from within the college and from the Maulana Azad Center for Elementary Social Education and collectively we would monitor how to teach the program, how to enable the uh, practicum to take shape because the practicums were also like a shell. There was no detailed practicum worked out but we did that through the first four years and some of the most senior faculty from across Delhi University taught the BLED in the college. Jesus and Mary College was the first college and Professor Krishna Kumar taught, Professor Nargis Panchapakeshan, myself, I taught, uh, Professor Ramakant Agnihotri from linguistics, there was Sudarshan Kapoor, Professor Amitabh Mukherjee from science faculties. So it was really interesting that some of the most sort of senior and well-established academics actually uh, were teaching the program and they gave shape to the program as the program sort of grew. And its first four years it was able to establish even the practicum and make it, you know, robust enough so that it could be scaled up to other colleges. Of course, within the first two years itself, Aditi College had started the program and then slowly the third and the fourth college. Uh, the second review took place in, um, at the end of four years, in 19... 98, 99 actually, when the first batch qualified. Now that also gave us a very good feedback as to what are the kind of things we need to do to improve the program, improve the teaching and enable the, a more stable sort of manner in which the program can function. So the University of Delhi colleges that have the program have what is called the Department of Elementary Education. Now this idea was seeded very interestingly and I remember when Professor Deepak Nair was the Vice Chancellor and Professor C. R. Babu was the PVC at that time, they in fact even uh, told us that we'll be very happy to create a Department of Elementary Education in the University of Delhi separate from CIE, so that elementary education can take on. And that time RTE was, had come in as the right to education 2009. So the idea was that this is really the only program that directly caters to RTE because it's elementary education. We prepare teachers for the elementary stage. So uh, there, was a, there was a proposal and we were really working towards creating the Department of Elementary Education. Never happened for various political reasons and that got sort of sidelined. But um, the, um, the challenge of really um, bringing the program to a level where we were able to scale it up was possible because we had every single year faculty development program for the BLET faculty. So every year we, were, we used to meet in batches. So there would be a batch of social science teachers, there would be a batch of science teachers or maths or even practicum like observing children. So there would be regular faculty exchange and interaction. We would call people, let's say, from the Lady Irwin College, child development people, or we would even call people like Mola Shri Hashmi who would come and you know, take a session on looking at activities, craft activities and theatre for children. And all the BLED faculty, even though they were ad hoc, they were not really permanent, but they were coming regularly for faculty exchange and development. And I think that is what 
held the vision together across the colleges because there was a huge difference in the colleges. Let's say Jesus and Mary College or LSR, much better endowed colleges. But then you have Shama Prasad Mukherjee or Aditi College that are not so well endowed. And yet, because we were exchanging and meeting regularly, the faculty was able to sustain the vision of the program as it was given. And we also set up a whole, there was a whole book that we developed on the norms of the bail ed, which meant looking at the student working hours, the teacher working hours, what kind of practicum, what is required, all of that was, everything was sort of worked out to the detail, to the dot of the I and to the cross of the T. And that is what I think helped us to sustain it vision. And then the third review happened in 2013 when we wanted to now take stock after a good more than a decade as to how uh, the program is doing. Uh, so several of the issues that emerged, let's say not having enough materials in Hindi, uh, curriculum materials for students because it's a bilingual program. But what was interesting is that we found through the review that because it was a bilingual program, students were actually helping each other. So those who are more comfortable with Hindi, they were seeking the help of those who are more comfortable with English to help translate articles. And we also tried to do that. I got some funds from the Tata Trust and we set up a regional resource center for supporting the BL Ed. We used to translate a whole lot of readings and provide it to students. But there was a nice sort of self-help groups that emerged and uh, you know we've got testimonies for, from students who say that the program has given us a sense of confidence so even if we are Hindi speakers we, we don't hesitate we are confident and this kind of thing I got from the libraries of the colleges who told us that your students have an amazing sense of confidence and what magic do you do so I think it's not magic it's just very simple that we give them recognition and the space to express themselves and the PLA is able to do that because of the diversity of experience that they get and as I said not to confine education to only that which the university or the college allows but to bring in other ways of knowing including theatre, self-development and craft, music so that opens their world in a much wider way and they're able to engage with issues in a more deeper sense. Yes, um, I think, I mean, there is a lot of interest that people have to look at progressive teacher ed programs like the BL ed. Uh, currently, of course, uh, the ITEP is being promoted through the National Education Policy 2020. The ITEP is, in its name, it says it's integrated, but it's really uh, within the frame of a three plus one model because it's about three years of general education and perhaps one year of professional education. So very much like the RIE model, uh, which used to, although that I think was a very robust model, but the ITEP, if you look at the structure of it, it looks as if it's got the same old colonial frame, psychology of education, sociology of education, philosophy of education. It does sort of move into the direction of interdisciplinarity, which is what the BLA was able to do. Now, even though the BL Ed has been mentioned in the NCFT, the National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education 2009, as an exemplar program, and many of its features were drawn upon to actually create the two-year BL Ed, which we were able to do post-Justice Verba Commission in 2015. And that's a robust program now. But because ITEP is being promoted and pushed by the government, it looks like every other program is under threat of being closed down. I yet I think there are progressive universities like you said Ashoka University or even Abedkar University. I mean they are interested in starting the BL Ed but because they are postgraduate universities they are a bit hesitant to do that. It works very well in undergraduate institutions. So there are uh, universities um, like the Urdu University Hyderabad were very keen to start. I think there are colleges undergrad within the, uh, within the state of Uttar Pradesh where they have started but because 96% of teacher education is in private hands 
these are private colleges who are actually wanting to start. Now we don't know whether they are ready for it, but there has to be some hand holding and I think it's possible to give them that provided the policy gives us the space to do that. So going back to let's say the 11th plan, 11th five year plan, right? That is the time when I was member of the working group on teacher education and I remember that we set up, we set up a proposal to start schools of education in the country. Now these people actually have run with that proposal. It didn't work out in the 12th plan, but after that when this new political regime came, they've actually set up schools of education in all the central universities, which is where it comes from, the 11th plan. So that's a great idea. But what they have not done is to institute programs that are progressive in nature. It's, it's happening in a very ad hoc way. So for example, even the mission for teachers, which started under UPA, finally it's come, I think, under this political regime, the Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya, very long name it has. It's, it's again a good idea, they're setting up learning centers of education, but the idea is to set them up in universities which are offering teacher education, but they, they seem to be setting it up indiscriminately anywhere. So ideas are being taken, but they're not being really instituted in a manner that, that uh, sort of gives a more robust frame within which teachers can be prepared better. And the main problem is, that our teacher education sector is 96 to 97 percent in private hands. Now this is something that the Justice Verma Commission took note of. This was a Supreme Court appointed commission and I was a member of the commission. And what we found is that um, while 80 percent, and this is at, in 2012, 80 percent of our children were going to state schools, government schools, but 90 percent of our teachers were being trained in the private sector. So this anomaly had to be somehow rectified. And what the recommendation of the Justice Verma Commission was that the government should invest in teacher education. But I don't see that happening even now. One of the recommendations that did happen was to convert the one year beard into a two year with greater space for integrating professional and general education so that they can engage with subject content with criticality and not just get very um, you know uh, caught in a generalized method approach which the colonial frame does but what i'm noticing today is that the itep is going back there so in a sense the itep is taking us back into the colonial frame and doing away with a very indigenously produced a teacher ed program like the BL ed. We did not look at any programs outside the country. It was rooted right here, looking at our own context. So in a sense, the Justice Verma Commission has been completely sidelined by this policy and by the government at the moment. And one of the key recommendations also was that the teacher preparation program needs a new kind of curriculum. And we need to bring it in line with the NCFT 2009. That was also a recommendation of Justice Verma, but that also didn't happen because soon after the new political dispensation came, the Justice Verma Commission report was completely put under the carpet. I don't think the NEP even mentioned this, except for saying that the Justice Verma Commission observed that there are many standalone institutions which need to be taken care of. But the point is, on the basis of the Justice Verma Commission recommendations, there were subcommittees that were formed. And I was heading one such subcommittee. And at that time, we had brought a report stating clearly that at that time, we had 34,000 undergraduate colleges in the country. And we said, let's start teacher education programs in those colleges. So you don't have to worry about closing down substandard teaching shops, because one is worried that you can't just shut down everything. Where will we get our teachers from? But then that was completely dismissed. Today, we have many more than 34,000 undergrad colleges. But ITEP doesn't really uh, pay any heed to what we need really in our current context and that has been a bit of a um, disappointment I would say because we are really 
we are really sort of going back, we are regressing in the area of teacher education. After having reached an inflection point where the Justice for a Commission, where the RTE 2009, where NCFTE and the NCF 2005 were literally converging to give us a very robust frame within which school education can be rejuvenated given the teacher preparation. But one must, uh, one must also add another thing that many of the states of the country unfortunately have not invested institutionally in developing teacher ed programs. I mean we know that for example Bihar hasn't, we know Madhya Pradesh has even done away with the cadre of school teachers. So institutionally we have weakened ourselves as a country, we don't have robust institutions to prepare teachers. So that problem I think uh, carries on and has become much worse.